from 110, 110, Big Hill Road on the Beach Creek. Should be the first residence on your ride. Right. Reference to a missing four year old. The parents have called in and advised that the mother had went for a walk, came home. Now they can't find her. They've been yelling for her. She's been gone for about 10 minutes now. As I said, watch Summer. I'll be back. And within two minutes, I came back. And I asked the boys where their sister was, and they said, she went downstairs, mom, to play with her toys in the playroom. I said, okay. And I yelled downstairs for her a couple times, and I didn't get no answer, which was unusual because usually she always answers me. And so I went down there to check, and she was nowhere in sight. She was just gone. Local, state, and federal agencies are on the ground searching for a little girl at the center of an Amber Alert. Search teams have covered almost 1,000 acres looking for that little girl. I want to get you straight to a picture of little Summer Wells, reported missing from her home in the Beach Creek area of Hawkins County. She was last seen wearing gray pants, a pink shirt, and was possibly barefoot. With at least 300 tips, TBI investigators say they expected to have more answers by now. Summer's father, Donald Wells, does have a criminal past. Don Donald Wells says Summer was planting flowers in the yard with her mom and grandmother. She went into the basement of their Rogersville house to play with toys. They haven't seen her since. She went down there and she was gone. So she went out the basement door, which was unlocked. Just please, please have mercy on that poor little baby. If there's an ounce of mercy in your body, I mean, please let her, just let her find a way to get home. Today I want to talk about Summer Wells. She's a little girl who went missing and everyone is talking about it because they're getting creepy vibes from her parents. Every day there are new theories that are popping up, disturbing details, new suspects, and a lot of it is speculation. Some of it is based in fact. And so I'm going to do what I usually do on my channel, which is give you guys the facts, We'll discuss the theories and then you can decide for yourself. If you're new, hi, I wear a tinfoil hat. I talk about true crime and conspiracies. And I have the series where I talk about all the suspicious things about someone or something, a case that I'm talking about. Thank you to my subscribers as always. And with all that being said, let's dive in. So the whole thing started on June 15th, 2021 about two weeks ago when a 911 call was made reporting Summer's disappearance. We do not have the 911 call, but we do have the police dispatch from that day. You can around from 110, 110, Big Hill Road on the Beach Creek. Should be the first residence on your ride. Reference to a missing four year old. The parents have called in and advised that the mother had went for a walk, came home. Now they can't find her. They've been yelling for her. She's been gone for about 10 minutes now. One summer was reported missing a massive, and I mean massive, search ensued. It was something crazy like over 70 different agencies and six different states were involved and all these specialized teams. They had helicopters, special technology, uh, certain divisions for child abduction or for search and rescue. I mean, it was like such a big deal and they were having a lot of problems. Cell phone service here in Hawkins County is not very good. The terrain is very harsh. You can see there's these hills all around us here. That impacts the signal for the older radios used by Hawkins County law enforcement. We can't hardly communicate at all on our radios and cell phones are out of the question. Cell signal boosters are being used to help improve coverage, but that's only helping somewhat. AT&T and Verizon both have bought uh, cell phone uh, service boosters to our command post to help try to utilize cell phone coverage, which is still very spotty. The terrain also makes the use of radios less effective. Some of the radio system used is about 15 to 20 years old, made up of parts of different systems. Causing search efforts to become very difficult, taking extra time to cover these areas adequately, exhausting teams a lot quicker, in turn causing longer for these grounds to be covered. So the day after Summer was reported missing, they upgraded it from an endangered child alert to an Amber alert, and this was due to, quote, 
new information and growing concern about the well-being of summer wells so this was not looking good every day that went by people were like oh no oh god along with the amber alert the tbi which is the tennessee bureau of investigations they released some more photos of summer these were more recent photos and in these photos her hair was very short and I know this may sound silly, but this is one of the, the first suspicious thing is her hair and why her hair was that short, especially when you look and you see that her mother also used to have, so Candace Wells is Summer's mom, and the same thing with Summer, she used to have longer hair and now it's short. So people are like, why is that a punishment? Or is it maybe negligence in the sense of like, she has lice or, you know, her hair is matted she's not being taken care of they just shaved it off there was a post that kind of started the lice rumor which i'll get into later however we did hear recently from candace and don themselves about why summer's hair was shaved and the interesting thing here is that you know they contradicted themselves in that interview sitting next to each other she was a tomboy i shaved my head she wanted to have her head shaved like me and the boys did she tried to shave her head she tried in the to back shave her head and, and make it, uh, I think you can see it in some of the pictures, and it was getting out of control, so she, we decided to shave her head off and let it grow back long, and she shaved her head to, to so she wouldn't feel bad, and, uh, but, but it didn't bother her. And when I watched the interview, my first thing was like, whoa, did he literally just say the opposite of what she said? Like she's saying that Summer shaved her hair to copy her hair. And then he's saying her hair was shaved. She wanted to be like her brothers. And then she shaved her hair so that she didn't feel bad. So, and then he didn't specify names. He was like she and it was zoomed in and it seemed like he was pointing. So I wasn't really sure. But then I found the interview article that went along with the interview and in that article they specify in parentheses that he is contradicting what candace just said because they're saying you know bly in parentheses when he's saying she referring to candace and then they're also putting summer in parentheses when he's saying so she didn't feel bad it could be nothing well, well whatever they, their hair is shaved like okay big deal but the fact that you know the stories don't match is weird like why don't the stories match are you guys lying are you hiding something what's going on so that was the first thing but it's a small thing but anyway i just thought i'd mention it we heard from don the father for the first time he didn't go on camera yet he released a statement although he did have news crews over at his house and he showed the area where they were planting flowers which is the story he gave and we saw where the back door of the basement is and we got a little bit of an idea of where this whole thing took place and then he had a statement and the statement said quote we know that there's people praying all around the world praying for her safe return so many people love her she would never leave our hill i think that someone snuck up on her and grabbed her i don't think she's in the area because the dog goes down to the road and that's the end of the trail but i don't know that for a fact the way she just disappeared she would never do that the message that don is wanting to give is that she's not in the area somebody took her it's an abduction, the scent is gone, she's not in the area. This is the first of many times that Don and Candace are going to send the message home that she's not here, someone took her, she's not in the area, don't look here, look somewhere else. The day after this statement was released is when Don actually went on camera and did an interview and this is when the case really started to gain traction. The demeanor of his son and how you know it makes sense if he's sad like his sister's missing other people are like no he's afraid it's almost like he wants to say something but he can't or he knows something but he can't say and and the way that he's grabbing him so i mean like people are reading a lot into the body language and all that kind of stuff this is when we heard what don had to say about what happened to summer for the first time tonight we are hearing from the father of summer wells so she went out the basement door which was unlocked and we have a senior sense. Please, let some of be okay. And please come home. Some bad person grabbed her, but we have no idea. We're trying to think, beat her brains out. We've covered everything that we can think of already. The dispatch audio said that the mom walked away. The parents have 
called in advised that the mother had went for a walk, came home, now they can't find her. And then when she came back, Summer was missing. Dawn said, she was planting flowers with her mother and her grandmother, and she wanted to go into the house. So my wife watched her go into the door, and she went into the house, and the boys were on the internet, of course, and she wanted to go downstairs and play with her toys. So when her mother come in, she says, where's Summer? She went down in the basement. She didn't answer, so she went down there, and she was gone. That they were planting flowers, she saw Summer go into the house. She was still there planting flowers. And then when she comes back to check on Summer, she's not in the basement and the boys don't know where she is. And that she must have left through this basement door. So people started saying, well, which one is it? Were they sitting by the camper that's by the house? If you look at the picture, the camper's right by the house. Is they're planting the flowers over there and they saw her go in, then they didn't walk away. Or did she just leave her in the house and walk away for how no, God knows how long and then that's when she went missing? Once Don gave this interview, people started talking. In this latest interview that we have where Don and Candace are together talking to media, they combine the story. Me and my mother and her were planting flowers and we went in after we got done washing our hands and she got a piece of candy from grandma and she wanted to go back over and see her brothers and I said okay and I walked her all the way over to the porch and I watched her walk into the kitchen where the boys were watching TV and I told the boys I said watch summer I'll be back and within two minutes I came back and I asked the boys where their sister was and they said she went downstairs, mom, to play with her toys in the playroom. I said, okay. And I yelled downstairs for her a couple times, and I didn't get no answer, which was unusual because usually she always answers me. And so I went down there to check, and she was nowhere in sight. She was just gone. There's another suspicious thing, which is Don Wells' arrest in October of 2020 for getting drunk and throwing or shoving Candace to the ground and he had a gun and then she said he drinks and he throws things and she's afraid for her and her children's safety. She said she's afraid for her mother too because the mom is on the property. So this is really when people were saying, oh, it looks like he has violent tendencies. There's drinking involved. What really happened? Came out to 110 110 Daniel Road on 6th Street. Have a domestic with assault. Same The party are uh, intoxicated. The female is refusing to leave the residence. They're in a verbal at this time. The unit route to Vigil Road were advised that there are four small children in the residence. There's also a couple other parties. She's in the back bedroom because there's not a door that locks. I was advising the male, maybe walking down the road, gray shirt and blue jeans. Not sure, it's not too very intoxicated. Female laid the phone down, walked away from it. Sounds like the male's back in the residence. She's yelling, ow, and stop. The city coming in at the a copy of Bolo. Bolo for a white DMC Sonoma, Utah tag. But from 110-110 Ben Hill Road, headed towards Church Hill. Reference to a domestic. Males intoxicated. He was called back in. There sort of the dogs was to clear the perimeter. So according to officer's notes, Dawn was drunk. Now this is the whole substance abuse thing. That's gonna come up a little bit later too, but he was drunk. He was like spilling out of the car, stumbling. They had to pick him up off the ground. They, he left and he came back and they were all still there. And that's why they arrested him. He had a gun he wasn't supposed to have. They were saying they were afraid of him. And so he ended up getting arrested. There's this mugshot of him where he looks 
you know, trashed. And then in an affidavit of protection where she wanted an order of protection, Candace said, he drinks and throws things. I am afraid of being hurt. He is abusive physically and mentally towards me. I am afraid for my children and myself. My mother fears he's going to hurt her because she's staying in her camper on the property. There were a lot of spelling mistakes and you know i the poverty and lack of education and that doesn't make anyone guilty by any means i do think it's just interesting because maybe it shows a a little bit of a disadvantage that candace is at maybe why she is in this i don't want to use the word victim but maybe she can easily be manipulated controlled she doesn't really have options what is she going to do to make money herself he's the provider so maybe she's like stuck in this situation then though candace recants and asks for the charges to be dismissed why would she change her story all of a sudden like is she afraid does he have control over her is this like an abuse situation like was she lying i mean well what is really going on don explains what happened and he claims it's just a huge misunderstanding the situation that occurred in october the domestic yeah yeah would you would you like to address that and tell me and tell me from you know what, what that what happened there uh well i don't know i really want to but i mean i mean I, and i wouldn't even ask you about this but it's already out there now my wife was trying to make me jealous so i'd come back and it worked very well so uh she wanted you to come home and and was trying yeah to make <laughs> yeah exactly i was out there i was out there at utah and i was at my sister's house and she was having a party and i was trying to tell her that i was at my sister's house at this party and i'm me and my son josie was getting some food what she, what she heard was something totally different where we are partying and getting drunk or whatever and she heard Wim's voice in the background like, she heard it, I gotta go so I can continue partying is what she heard. Mm -hmm. That wording was not good. It said she's serious for her safety, her mother's safety, and the children's safety. Yeah, that she, you know. Okay. So the situation here is, no mama, it's okay. Good girl protecting house, she protecting house. Where was the crazy part? Yeah, it says here, allegedly, Wells argued with the person in the house and began a struggle with Bly, that's Candace. Documents say Bly was pushed down, causing an injury to her left knee. She and other witnesses said, Wells began punching himself in the face before leaving. The fact that he was punching himself, if this is true, I think that shows like just how far he's willing to go and what he does and manipulation and lies and tactics that shows me just you know a little bit about Don. This isn't the only criminal history that is involved with this couple. Not only does Don have more charges but so does Candace. We'll, we'll get into that when I talk about the theories and take each suspect and do all that. In the immediate days after Summer went missing, Don and Candace were more active on social media than they are now. Now I find it pretty interesting that maybe even suspicious that a lot of posts seem to be wiped. There's huge gaps in Facebook pages like Candace's Facebook page, her mom's Facebook page. There's all these posts about the summer being missing that are very recent and frequent, but then there's like gaps. And then all of a sudden there's like one post years ago. And it's like, if you look at Candace's TikTok, she's a very frequent, she's posting a lot. And she seems like the kind of person that's always posting on social media. So I think it's very strange that somebody who posts that frequently all of a sudden has gaps in their postings. Like, were they deleted? Is there something that was being hidden? I heard a rumor a post, so this is a rumor, like I said, of somebody saying that the picture that is supposed to be the last picture of summer was actually posted on the 6th of june and if it was supposed to be taken on the 15th of june how is it posted on the 6th of june and now people are saying it's like she's lying about the timeline so i mean i don't know what's going on with the social media posts not being there if they were never there or if they got deleted just noticing and telling you guys that there is this gap supposedly this is candace and she says okay 
for all you that feel so much hatreds toward me and my kids are my world and life yeah my house uh, ain't the best I'm not the richest person in the world but I have no reason to lie about anything or hide anything my life is an open book that baby girl is my everything to me judge if you want but at the end of this, God will take care of us all, good or bad. I pray with all my being that she comes home safe. I know a lot of you wander, wonder why I wouldn't, won't talk on the news. It's because of you haters. Nothing never good enough for anyone. But I did pass all my tests. Love the world and everyone in it. So speaking of I did pass all my tests, this brings me to the next thing that happened, which is that Don came out and he said that Candace took a polygraph and she passed it. Then he was like, there's this tip going on. We're freaking out. Well, my wife was just, just, just left the district attorney's office with the FBI and she passed her uh, lie detector test. And then they told her to hurry down to the command center because they just got a tip. So we're freaking out right now. Then there was this other post that was circulating from Don, and he's much more active. Uh, he responds to a lot of comments and stuff, but this is a post he made where he said, I dreamed that Summer was with me on a commercial construction site, and I asked her where she had been, and she said down the road. I woke up with the word Moderna repeating over and over again. Like the vaccine? Oh, that's weird. Uh, we've been praying to God to send angels and please give us something to go on. I've looked on maps and could only find Moderna Prod in, or production in SC, South Carolina, and a small place in Mexico. Please help me with this. It might mean something to somebody. Prayers, hope, and love. Or he could have been like on some pills and fell asleep watching a commercial for Moderna and then the dreams all combined. At this point, People were saying, why haven't we heard from the mother? The mother hasn't come out. It's only been Dawn. She said, like, I'm not doing an interview because of you haters. Dawn was saying repeatedly, like, she won't talk because of the haters. And people were just kind of like, is he not letting her talk? Is she not wanting to talk herself? Like, what's going on? And then, boom, we ended up hearing from them. I have to do one step at a time, I guess, but yeah, there's always going to be haters, you know, and, you know, it's always going to be that way in this world, and we just want to focus on the the good friends and Christian people that are trying to help us and praying for us and praying for summer, and uh, we thank them from the bottom of our hearts, and that's the, the kind of people we try to relate with and socialize with. So we don't know anything about, you know, no red truck or we hardly know many of our neighbors. I mean, because we just try to be around good people. I mean, and we do have good people in this area. We found out since this has all happened, we got some real good neighbors and good folks everywhere. But uh, the most important huh. thing is to bring Summer home safe. I'm sorry that you feel this way about us, but we love our children with everything we have. We've never went without, thanks to Summer's daddy and my husband. He's always provided for us and has worked as much as he could and can and still is. And I'm sorry that you guys feel that way, but that's my baby, and nobody would ever treat her like that as long as I was around, ever. She loved to play in the mud and the water and swing on her swing and enjoy dirt. When I was when I run the lawnmower around, she she would run behind me. When the boys run their bikes around, she as fast as that little bike could go she would be behind them running and keeping up with them, no problem, you know. She loved to run. She just loved to run. And uh, she could pull herself up on that swing, her full body weight with her two hands, and she could do that. Nobody, none of the other boys could do that, but she can. Was she at school yet? No, no. she was going this year. This was supposed to be her first year She's of kindergarten. Been, uh, we did all the what? I took care of everything. Yeah. She, I had her already took on all of her shots and registered in the school for ready for this year. 
you know. I just never expected for anyone to get a hold of my heart like she has, because I try to guard my heart as much as I can, but she just, she's, she holds my heart in her little hands, and I love her with all my heart. I mean, I'd do anything to have her back. If there's any way, if you can find it in your heart to please release her somehow, I don't know how you might do that. I mean, cause I'm, you're probably scared of going to prison for the rest of your life and everything else, I'm sure. But please find it in your heart, have mercy, and find a way of letting her go and, and where we can get her back. And uh, just please have mercy on her and, you know, and us and her, her brothers. And she's such a loving, good spirit, please. Please don't hurt her. Please let her come home. That she's my biggest fear is, you know, her being tormented or locked in a, a dungeon or basement or something. And I just I'm so afraid that she's locked away. She's such a loving heart and everything, and I'm afraid that she won't be able to, you know, I'm locked away where she can't be outside or play with a puppy or anything, love nature, you know, you know, and it just, it's, that's my greatest fear that she's not able to do I'm any sure of these things anymore or, or that she could possibly, you know, I, I, I don't want to think she's dead, but it's a possibility. I don't want to address all the negativity. I just want to focus on the positive because it's so easy to get, you know, lost in that negativity and stuff, and it's just not worth it. So I'm just, uh, I appreciate y'all, the, the good things you say and, uh, and your prayers. That's awesome. People were saying she looks high. Dawn is high too. A lot of people think, I don't know, maybe even me, if, if, if my child went missing, you would probably have to put me on a tranquilizer. I, I don't know. Or maybe adrenaline would pop. Maybe I would focus. I don't know what I would do. I hope I never have to know. But people were saying she's on something, no doubt about it. That wasn't up for discussion. What was up for discussion was, well, maybe she's on these pills because she's going through something and that's the only way she can cope and do this interview and function. Other people were like, mm, maybe this is like something that's been going on for a long time and maybe this is why she's missing. But the point is she seemed high and people were like, that's suspicious. I love Vanessa and Teresa from Unmasked, from the Unmasked YouTube channel, which I, I did like a little true crime and wine thing with them. There was a live, which you, I'm pretty sure you've seen. If not, I'll link it down below, but it's a live with Teresa and Melissa. And they basically had a text interview with Candace. They also knew from Candace that she was going to do an interview with the news that night. So that happened. We had the live, then we had the interview that same night. During that interview, it was text. So Candace was saying how she didn't have the voice and the services body and blah, blah, blah. So they texted her and we got a lot of answers to questions that we had. We found out who called 911. There were some issues with, was it Candace calling Dawn instead of calling 911? She said that she called 911 and Dawn called 911. I want to talk about the timeline the day Summer went missing. According to Candace, her mom, so grandma, I'm gonna say mom and grandma just to clear the confusion. Grandma had to go to the ER for some sort of knee pain. Maybe she got some prescription for some painkillers. And then they all together, mom and grandma, Summer, and then a 14 or 15 year old boy, a family friend, they all went to a watering hole, a pond, they went swimming. And this was at around 12 21 p.m there's a TikTok video of this that was posted the day summer went missing you don't see the grandma in the video but according to candace the grandma was there after this video is taken they all get in the car together and they go to the grocery store i'm sure the grocery store might have a pharmacy there if she went to the yard ER, it's possible she may have filled a prescription there maybe possibly i don't have any proof of this i'm just saying the next thing that happens is that they drop off this 15 year old boy 
And then there's an accidental video, according to Candace, that she provided. She still got her arm up? No. Oh, that's what I was trying to catch. She still got her arm up? No. Oh, that's what I was trying to catch. Grandma, who's in the passenger seat, trying to film Summer, who's in the back seat, with her seatbelt on, although one of the straps is behind her, like sleeping on some gallons of milk. And apparently her arm maybe was in a funny way. And so the grandma is saying, is her arm still in that position? And Candace is like, no. And she's like, oh, okay, I was trying to get, catch that. So maybe they were trying to do another TikTok. Like I said, they like to post certain things, a lot of things on social media. This video was taken, according to Candace, on the 15th at 3.09 p.m. So between 12.21 to this 3.09 when some are sleeping, they've run these errands and dropped this boy off. The next thing that happens that we know on the timeline is that at 6.30 around, we get that call, the 911 call where Summer is missing. So between this video of Summer sleeping in the back of the car to when that 911 was called, it's about three hours, what happened to Summer in those three hours? That's what everybody wants to know. So now let's talk about the theories because one theory emerged from this new piece of information and this timeline, and that is to do with pill seeking, pill shopping, that the theory is that maybe even the grandma, that they all were, you know, using or maybe even abusing pills. This is a crisis in this country and maybe even around the world, particularly in rural areas in America. It's like a fact that this is a huge issue, not just in rural areas, but particularly people. I live in a rural area. This is huge here where I live and it's because there's nothing to do, um, among other things. The theory is that maybe the grandma had gone to the ER for her knee. They got these prescriptions and they popped the pills. Maybe they just lost track of time, they dozed off, they walked around, things happened. And maybe something happened to Summer where they weren't looking or maybe she did go missing and they just didn't notice. She says that she went for a walk. She said she left for only two minutes. And I told the boys, I said, watch Summer, I'll be back. And within two minutes I came back. So in two minutes, somebody was able to come and snatch Summer without the dogs barking or nobody noticing, even though she wasn't really that far away and it was only two minutes and they were able to grab her and walk off from anyone's sight with no one being alerted. We're supposed to believe that that happened or she wandered, but according to them, she would never wander. She would never walk away. She never leaves the hill. I know she didn't walk away from this property by herself or off this yard by her swing. I don't go on walks around here or runs because I'm scared of the bears and snakes and even the coyotes that are around here. That is one theory about, you know, the pills and the prescription and the timeline. Let's talk about another theory, the abduction theory. Now, Dawn and Candace really want you to believe that somebody came and snatched Summer. Which makes me think, you know, someone was laying in wait. I've heard somebody say that these uh, people track kids down on Facebook and find them and, you know, I've heard that story. I mean, I don't know, but all I know is she's definitely not anywhere around there. She's, I think somebody's abducted her and took her out of the area. I feel in my heart that somebody has came up here and took her. Somebody abducted her. Are you involved with some people that could have possibly done that? No. I, I try to stay involved with church people and good people and stuff like that. So if she was in, abducted, you think it was somebody that you don't know? Yeah. Yeah. My personal opinion is it's maybe some human trafficking ring uh, seen her on Facebook and tracked her down like some kind of... You know, if somebody is taken out of the area, whether it's a human trafficking ring or what or who, but I mean, I knew from the first day she wasn't in the area. Well, whoever has my daughter, I pray and hope that they have not harmed her and they bring her back to us safe and sound. Well, we knew, I knew right away that she was abducted. You know, I knew that right away, and that's what I told them from the beginning, but they have to 
they have to go through their, you know, I forget the word. Investigation. This theory, although it can't 100% be proven, there's also no evidence to support it either. So it's kind of like, I don't know, believe what you want to believe. According to TBI, they said, while we've not ruled out an abduction, we simply do not have any evidence at this point to confirm that that's what occurred. With the abduction theory, uh, people do think that it's possible if they're not telling the truth about you know, how long Summer was left unattended. Maybe it was more time or they were like kind of out of it. And so it, it, it could have happened if they were being more honest about what actually happened. It could be more believable, but we don't know if that's the case. The other theory is Don, the father, did something. There are a lot of people who believe this theory. The facts... I found this on the web. Whoa, 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 whoa. And the reason why a lot of people believe this obviously is to do with his criminal past showing um you know a capacity and ability a history of being aggressive towards his family the mom said she's afraid for her children's safety as well as hers and then he has a lengthy criminal past the charges that he have he has charges all the way from the early 90s the early 2000s the mid 2000s uh, things like possessions of controlled substance or it says here substance without prescription which kind of adds to the whole pill issue theory then there's misdemeanor battery theft here are you know some of his charges they go all the way back and they're from different states and what have you so this is something that people point out. The other thing that people mention is the tense, the fact that he's talking in past tense when he talks about summer. And you know, I, I put out there that one of, can, uh, one of summer's favorite songs was uh, Godzilla, and they say, you know, and they're jumping all over me about past tense, was, you know, well, I'm sorry about that. It's just, and I think she really loved to be in church because she felt a lot of love there. And I think it's, you can't explain what that love is, but you feel it and you know it, you know, when you're young. And she felt that there and, and she loved everybody in that church. Or she loves everybody in that church. I should rephrase that because they'll tear that apart as past tense. And I apologize again for that. Well, maybe we won't never see her again, you know. Or, so I start thinking in past tense, sorry. But I'm trying to keep hope up. I'm trying to keep my prayers up and all that. And after addressing it, he went and did it again and then had to apologize for it again. So ugh. the other suspicious thing about Don is that police are not able to confirm his version of events. Now they can't disprove it either. So it's the same thing with the abduction theory. That's what they kept reiterating is that the circumstances leading up to her disappearance remain unclear. The circumstances surrounding the summer's disappearance remain unclear. The fact that there's nothing to support what he's saying and the theory that he is proposing, the abduction theory, doesn't really look good for him. The next theory is that something happened due to neglect or maybe even abuse but that it was like an accident, not something malicious that was done intentionally, but maybe it was they're being careless. She loved to be outside all the time. That's, that was her, unfortunately, her, you know, her downfall. Because a lot of times we'd be, the boys would be inside and we'd be like, where's Summer? Why'd you leave her out there alone? You know, go get Summer now, you know, and that's happened over and over again. And now they're afraid that they're going to be held liable for it. So they thought it was better to say that she's missing than to actually admit what happened. And maybe they even covered it up after the fact. Remember how I told you about a neighbor who did a Facebook post or message talking about the lice thing with the hair? And this is what the neighbor Allegedly, I don't even know if it's really the neighbor, but on Facebook, this is circulating, so I'll just read it to you. I called DCS. I'm not sure whatever came about the situation, but I haven't slept because I feel so guilty for not doing more. I should have kept calling, but I didn't think they would do anything because I already called. I told them what I knew, that I saw her 
hit and kick Summer and that they would lock her in the basement. I called again as soon as I found out Summer was missing. The basement had a lock on the inside and outside, but I've been in the basement and I know how hot it gets and she would scream. You don't punish a kid this way. I assume Summer never told them the truth if they talked to her. She could be a hyper little girl. What kid isn't? She always wanted attention. She was a very sensitive kid. One day her mom wasn't watching her and she pulled out plants and her mom had a fit. As far as the DCS report about her husband, just so you know, her mother was just as scared. Candace as she was her son-in-law. Her mother was just as scared Candace as she was her son-in-law. She ran all over her mother, called her names, etc. I don't I think they're talking about like the grandma. I don't know how she tolerated them. Oh, and it's funny how nice and sympathetic Donald talks on camera. That's not who he is and it makes me sick. He could be nice, yes, especially if he needed your help with something. They would fight over money or something and she would just go sit outside and do videos and nearly and was nearly falling asleep she did fall asleep smoking and drinking beer but she acted high too this is a side effect from like if you take a lot of pills that are downers you just kind of doze off she did fall asleep smoking and drinking okay like i said other times she would curse and hit him back so you never know sorry so you never knew what her personality would be on any given day. I think drug use made her bipolar. I never personally witnessed drug use, although I suspect she did pills. I saw him drink, but he never seemed super high unless he was drunk, but he did mention Xanax. Beer was their preference for alcohol. They must have cleaned up thousands of beer cans outside before they called the law. The place would have looked much worse if it wasn't for some, some of the help she had. I wouldn't say she was depressed, just high 75% of the time. She told me she fell asleep and Summer grabbed a cigarette and ate it when she was one, as the boys were supposed to be watching her. I don't know if that's true or not, but I honestly do not think some mysterious person came on the property and grabbed Candace. I don't know if she meant to say summer or if this is a sign this is not reliable i stopped going around them because they made me quite uncomfortable the last few times i stopped by was to check on the kids but i just had to stop going by there i'm super empathetic and i just had to stop going and they didn't know i was the one who called dcs on them they also had an ant and rat problem too and they really didn't care about that either she says CPS was called more than once. They made several trips. They were told to clean up. That said, the kids never said anything bad, which is understandable. One of the boys hit the other boy with a BB gun more than once. Dogs were hit with BB guns, which they all thought was funny. Both parents hit each other and the kids. Both did drugs. The girl always craved her mom's attention and she sent her to stay in her room. Holidays, she could come out and play. And when they went to the creek and occasionally he'd take them outside to play with guns to teach them to hunt. But using BB guns on dogs is sick. The girl always held her crotch like she had an infection or was molested her teeth were never brushed she had one bath a week at most Saturday night and the tub was filthy she had lice and yeast infections summer would give everyone a hug she was desperate for attention and love what's odd is that her dad would buy her gifts all the time dolls jewelry she would give them away she would give gave me gifts twice i asked her why but she never said she said her daddy bought it for her though her the mom gave the boys a little attention but not summer she seemed jealous of summer and picked on her i didn't understand but now i think she may have been molested the boys picked on summer too wouldn't let her go to their room to play so she had to play by herself all the time but of course boys only see how the parents treat each other so they think it's normal they curse a lot and summer said god doesn't like that they were horribly prejudiced the boys would destroy the dolls she had so i thought maybe that's why she gave away her dolls she would give away everything her dad gave to her something does not add up such a sweet smart little girl i'm so angry because cps failed this child <sighs> that's a lot some of these things seem to be corroborated for example our best friend in that yeah. church was robin she loved yeah. her to death yeah she looked up to when women that were she come to that church she went looking for robin that was her favorite person when you look at the footage that has come out of summer in her church there's a lady in the church who once she was singing and summer was all over her it's so sad how much she wanted like hug and love and attention and then once the lady you know started focusing on what she was doing she just kind of left
when she talked about the the necklaces and the gifts that summer would get that she would give away then there was another interview that that lady from the church did where she talked about how candace i mean summer gave her a necklace a gift that is similar to what this person is saying also usually part of the grooming process is gift giving maybe if that is true if don was doing something to summer and then giving her gifts and then she was giving them away like she seemed to give a gift to this person from the church she seemed like she wanted attention from this person as a church and this is what this person is saying as well so maybe some of it is true i don't know it would be nice to know if there was any calls to dcs to co corroborate this i mean you guys can decide for yourself if you think that's credible or relevant but it is part of why people think that there is a theory to do with Don. Also, it talks about Candace and what Candace mistreating Summer. And so now I want to talk about Candace and the theory that Candace did something and maybe Don is helping her cover it up. Because that's another theory. One of the things that kind of supports that theory and also supports the message i read the text from the neighbor who was saying how candace was mean to summer and how she hit dawn too interestingly enough when i did a little background check on her come to find out that she actually has charges for domestic abuse so when you look at candace's background check and you look at the criminal record you will see that she does have a bit of a criminal history the first thing that popped up was an offense dated May 1st, 2003. This was in Wisconsin and it is for domestic abuse, battery, domestic abuse, disorderly conduct, resisting or obstructing an officer, possession of drug paraphernalia. And this was uh, a misdemeanor uh, for domestic abuse. And it says here 9680751A, which I Googled that in the official like Wisconsin legislature. And it was basically when you abuse like a spouse. Um, it wasn't directed towards kids, it was directed towards the spouse. So this corroborates that message about her potentially, you know, hitting um, Don. When you look at their criminal histories and what's happening now, this is leading a lot of people to think that there is some validity to these theories that the parents are somehow involved or at the very least they're negligent and are like covering up after the fact. Oh, what you want me? What the matter? What the Lulu? You want to come sit on mama lap? Okay. All right. So so this brings us to this other crazy theory that came out so there was this 15 year old or 14 year old i've heard both but let's just say he's 15 and he was seen with summer the last day that anybody ever saw her and that's when they were swimming together and people were saying that candace had a relationship with this 15 year old boy an inappropriate one and the reason why people were saying this was because apparently the mom of this boy is is the one saying this and then they're finding like facebook posts and messages between them and videos where people are saying there's like an inappropriate thing going on between them and that she's supplying him alcohol and it's just like this whole crazy thing and like did they did she give him twisted tea and somebody went to the site where the pond was and they found twisted tea and it's like you know the a conspiracy right according to the text interview that was done on the unmasked youtube channel with teresa she said that it, the mom was upset that she didn't want to lie uh to a 12 year old and so she's getting back at her by making up these fake rumors about her and her son it's like this whole thing going on where people are like he either saw something he knows something he did something it's all speculation he is a minor so i think we should be mindful of spreading the information please do not put his full name in my comments like please don't do that um i know you can find it but i just feel like it's a minor this is huge you can't just be like saying somebody did this and had these like hey, come on you know like it's 
come on. Then another theory about another person who could have done something is they're saying that there was a guy, a boyfriend of the grandma who was registered to be living with them who could have done something but Candace dispelled that too. She said that he wasn't there at the time that Summer was there, he was long gone and it has nothing to do with it. It's, you know, one of those things where the age gap was really small and he was 15 and the girl was 12 and she lied about her age and so it's not as bad as it looks, which is the same sort of thing that Don Wells said when he was confronted with the fact that his son was also an offender, sexual. Well, yeah. here, here's another sticky one that, yeah, the situation with your oldest son, um, yeah, in his previous criminal history, and that, that yeah, the, I mean his uh, conviction as a yeah. just as, as a sexual offender against children. That's, right. that's yeah. you know that's a pretty big red flag. And that's I asked you about that well, the first time we spoke. Yeah. Well, let me elaborate if you don't mind. Sure. Um, okay. If here in Tennessee, say for instance, your boy, or one of your kids, you know, is seventeen, and the one he's with. No, say so he's 18 and she's 17 or something like that. Okay, in other states, especially like Utah, you, you're probably not going to even ever get out of prison. I mean, but here in Tennessee, they look at they, there's so there's got to be so many years difference between them. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in Arkansas where he was arrested, they don't care about that. But here in Tennessee, he would have never went to jail and he would have got to raise his his uh, boy and everything probably would have been fine. And there was only 18 months, maybe, a year, I don't know, between them. I'll even have him call you if you want me to, and he could probably explain it better to you. Well, when you... He's a good kid. When Summer went... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's in Utah. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I mean, when I told when I first told him, he bawled like a little baby. Well, do you want to talk about what happened to you in Utah, how you, what, what your previous criminal history was? Um... I really don't want to start to talk about all that stuff. Then people talk about the fact that the sister, so Candace's sister went missing like a while ago, like years ago. And people are like, wow, that's so weird. How is there two people missing from the family? But when you look into it, it doesn't seem on the face of it, at least that it's connected. You decide for yourself. However, I will give you a brief rundown of what happened with her disappearance. So it's Rose Marie Bly. She is Somerwell's aunt, her maternal aunt. She went missing in 2009. She apparently had a fight with her husband. Her husband did pass a polygraph though. Although polygraphs are pretty controversial, they're not admissible in court. They are used in investigations. People know how to pass them. Um, they found her car after the fact. They just like vanished without a trace. She's still missing. And Candace even talked about it in the recent interview. Very numb. When my sister came missing, I was in between you. Arkansas and Tennessee. I don't know all of what happened or what did happen. But I hope that they find her too and bring her home safely too. This is the latest information. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up having to do one or more follow-up videos on this case. It's definitely developing. Um, I have a hard time knowing when to like stop and actually film the video. I can get really stuck in the research part and just never come up because really you could keep going. And anyway, so that's, that's like not your problem, but, but anyway, so this is what I have right now. Um, I would love to know what you guys think about the situation. Do you think it is foul play? Do you think it's an abduction? Do you think the parents are involved? Do you think they're not involved? Do you think it's just a witch hunt and oh my God, like leave these people alone. They're going through something. Stop being judgmental. I'm seeing a lot of everything so i just want to know where your heads are at let me know what you guys think me personally and this is just my conspiracy allegedly don't sue me hear me out i i look i don't know the extent of like what the parents did if they actually did something horrible i don't know for like i don't think i don't know i just feel like they're not saying everything that really happened and i think that at the least they just kind of were negligent and careless and they don't want to admit that 
um, you know, maybe Summer did go missing and she was just gone, but they were actually gone for hours and not paying attention to their kids for hours rather than the two minutes. That to me is like the bare minimum of what I think it is. I hope it's not worse. And you know, I hope she's found alive, I hope, but we shall see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.